I'm not going to lie to you guys. Today's episode is not going to be the sexiest. We are talking about insurance, but it might be the most important. So today I'm going to go through insurance, but oftentimes insurance is just overwhelming. I'm going to imagine a lot of you have thought to yourself, yep, I know I need disability insurance, or yep, maybe I do need more term life or homeowners or flood insurance, but it's overwhelming. I don't know what I do need. I don't want to pay for something I don't need. So you get that paralysis analysis and you do nothing. And that's what a lot of people do. And don't be yourself up if that is you. Today, I'm going to tell you and really show you a framework so you can go, yep, Ari, I get it. I need that or nope, I don't need that. I'm glad I didn't get it. I don't want any of you overinsured paying for anything you don't need, but I also don't want you going, oh my gosh, there's one cost. If I would have just paid this amount every month, you're telling me I could have avoided this huge cost over time. Some people even say, Ari, when you talk about investing, that's not sexy, but it's important. I would argue to me, investing is the fun side of talking about all this planning. I'd say even tax planning, really exciting because no one loves paying taxes. However, insurance oftentimes does not light people up and I get it. It's boring until it's not. And so I just want to make sure it's not overwhelming. You guys walk away from this episode going, yep, I know what I need to know about insurance. Now, I made a post in my YouTube community page and I said, insurance is boring until it's not. It's overwhelming though. What should you buy? Long-term care, commercial, umbrella, disability, health, renter, security, auto, health, home, life. It goes on and on and on. Now, I received a few interesting comments from you guys. One comment came from Mike, and Mike says, I love a home warranty. Whether you're a first-time homeowner or you're on your 10th, it saved me thousands on refrigerator repair, ice machine repair, heat pump. He goes, yes, the whole thing. I have a brand new one now. Septic pump replacement, the list goes on. 600 to 700 bucks a year has produced one heck of a return. And Mike, it sure does sound like it. Then someone by the name of DB commented and says, there have been several times either my travel, auto, or property insurance has refused to pay my claim. Check out how many Floridians like myself have had their claims denied. Personally, I avoid all insurances except when it's clearly necessary. And so hard to, of course, know when it is necessary. And in my opinion, this is why there's so much confusion in this space. No one is really clear on how much they do need. They also know that it's important, but it's also not fun to talk about. So we're going to, in the next 10 minutes, really distill this down. So you're going to know exactly what you need to be aware of and what you don't. So we're going to start going through this. Now, as I said at the beginning, investing can be sexy. No one loves paying taxes. Insurance isn't but it can yield a much greater return. So I don't want any of you overinsured, but I also don't want you to lack protection. It's easier said than done. Most people, just so you're aware, they go, Ari, I wanna hire you because my current advisor is not doing tax planning or they are, but they're retiring soon and I wanna make sure I have someone in place to help with that. Then when they go through our planning process, I show them how I can say, help save them on taxes or invest better. And then I say, I need to look at your insurance policies. I need to look at your umbrella. I need to look at life. I need to look at disability. I need to look at everything. And more often than not, that's what I find is, it's, I don't think it's going to be to most of your surprise, is that there's oftentimes a lack of protection there. I have people coming to me and there is no disability insurance by any means in place. Other people, it's they, they have too much umbrella coverage where they're they're just matching their net worth, which is not the way you want to do it. So there's all these different ways and it can save thousands of dollars both on the front end. If I can say, hey, you don't need to pay for this amount of umbrella insurance, go invest that for the next 30 years. Look, it's 200,000 bucks. Other people go, oh my gosh, yep, I see the value in that, but I just have a hard time paying for insurance because I don't know if I'm going to need it. And that's where it comes to reframing. And that's my goal today, not to change any of your guys' minds right away, but to reframe and here's what I want you to think through. I'm going to give you a basic example. You guys know I love examples. And then we're going to go through some, some good stuff. I won't necessarily say fun stuff, but good stuff. And here's the good stuff is when we're going through this, the example I want to give you right off the bat is that people will look at term life insurance and say, I think I need it. And so for those of you that already have term insurance, you know quite well, what you're doing is you are paying a very small amount compared to any other insurance out there like whole life or universal. And if God forbid anything happens to you, your beneficiaries get these assets and they get them tax free. So there might be a $500,000 benefit that goes to your partner so that they can invest that and that can be their retirement income source. Maybe it's for children to go through college. You're aware of that right now. Less people think about the fact that you are getting an amazing return if God forbid something happens. So if you are 
paying, for example, $650 a year, and that's giving you, call it $500,000 in life insurance, God forbid something were to occur, that's an amazing return. And so very few people look at it that way. However, I want you to hope that you never get that return. This is the one time when you hear insurance, I want you to hope that you never get that return. And that sounds odd to say because in investing, we want to get a great return. I don't want you to get a great return because it would mean, of course, something tragic occurred, but it's one of those things that we absolutely want to make sure that, yes, if we need it, it's in place. But I have clients right now that have term life insurance and they don't need it on paper, meaning their financial plan does not require it. If something, God forbid, were to occur, they are going to be okay, but they still want it because that return that you might get, if something, of course, tragic occurred, it is substantial. And few people look at it that way. The other way that I want to go through and kind of the the good examples, like I said, maybe not sexy today, is what are the the absolute insurance policies that I'm reviewing for my clients so you're aware. Number one is that life insurance. This, of course, provides security for your loved ones if something happens. It can pay for funeral expenses, outstanding debt, living expenses, and most people will just look at do I need it, and they don't look at what's the return that I get if something like that occurs. So something to think about for some of you that of course have a higher liquid asset base or higher just net worth in general going hey i don't think i need insurance not just do you need it it can oftentimes be actually a really good financial instrument if you're thinking through it well number two is health insurance for a lot of you you're going ari i want to retire early i've heard the podcast enough how do i do it now i wrote an ebook and if you haven't downloaded it already it's in the description on everything you need to think through for health insurance for an early retirement, but health insurance, it really depends. Does your employer pay for it? Do you want a certain policy? These types of insurance, like health insurance of any kind, this is one of those that you do not want to skimp on. The last thing I want, especially none of us know, but if something God forbid were to happen, I don't want you going, oh my God, I've got a chronic illness, a significant condition, and I just didn't pay for that policy, even if it's unlikely. So as I'm saying all of this, there's a theme that I hope is resonating, which is you are paying for insurance, hoping you never get your money back. I want you to pay every month, not going, well, I I wasted it. Nope, you used it. You used it because you did not have to go through whatever is that whether it's life, meaning whether it's a passing, whether it's a significant tragic health event, I want you to pay every single month happy that you didn't have to file a claim for it or quote unquote, get your money's worth. This is one of those weird kind of reframing techniques And it goes with auto insurance as well, which is number three. Now, this type of insurance required most states. And of course, it helps pay for damage to your car or to other people's cars. If you're involved in an accident, there's homeowners, renters insurance. I evaluate that for my client. That is really to determine, okay, regarding any damage, if it's damaged by fire, if it's theft, is it other covered events? Do you have the protection that you need based on where you are? And the biggest one is long-term disability. This is the type of insurance that provides income if you are not able to work due to a disability. Now, you might be going, Ari, I'm working right now, but I don't know if I need long-term disability insurance because I only want to work three more years or five more years or 10 more years. And for some of you, it's nope, I, I want to work 20 more years. So of course it depends. It always does. Sometimes it's frustrating. I can tell you to listen to any podcast where people talk broadly because it's like, okay, this is great, but it's not really dialed to my situation. There's a company called BC Brokerage. That's where I go for most of my clients that go, all right, I don't know where to start. I think I need more life insurance or maybe I need less and I need disability. BC Brokerage, they only work with advisors like myself, but that's where I'll often go if I want to say, hey, we need to get some quotes or understand what's needed. If you're looking for property casualty insurance, well, there's a company known as IPCG, and that's where I'll often refer clients as well. And so those are just two sources. doesn't mean you, of course, have to go to those. You can search online, but whether it's good or bad, how could you know? You don't do this for a living. Now, there's more than just that, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much. I do want to give you a real-life example as we're going through this as well, which is when you're thinking through, okay, what's the type of insurance I do need? I just kind of went through a, a basic template, life insurance, health insurance, auto, homeowners, renters, long-term disability. Those are the main ones. Some insurance you may not need. I also want you to think about these. So if you've thought about them at all, hopefully you'd never have to think about them again. And of course, it's not for everyone, but extended warranties is number one. These warranties often do not cover as much as you think, and they can be expensive. And so for a lot of my clients, they're emailing me, Ari, should I get this warranty? Is it worth it? And more often than not, the answer is no, not all the time. 
Credit card insurance. This is a type of insurance typically covers your purchases if your credit card is lost or stolen. However, I often don't recommend my clients get this because your credit card issuer may already offer this coverage and it's just an added fee that's unnecessary. Flight insurance. This type of insurance typically covers your flight if you are unable to travel, but you need it to be because of a covered event, such as a medical emergency. And I had a client that said, Ari, I just want to get this insurance for this upcoming flight. Um, I said, great, go get it. And they got their insurance and then they needed a doctor's note. And their doctor was only going to write them a note for about $250. And because of that they're like all right it's gonna be a you know i'm gonna it's gonna be a positive fifty dollars but i would have paid two hundred fifty dollars then i get two hundred dollars back and so it just wasn't worth what we call the return on hassle so however once again when you look at flight insurance your travel insurance may already offer this coverage as well and so it's one of these things that if it helps you sleep better knowing hey if i have to cancel a flight um, awesome, but please know it's not this magical flight insurance where if you just cancel for cancel sake that you'll be able to get those funds back and the hassle to get it back, once again, not sure it's worth it. Then pet insurance. This type of insurance can be helpful, actually, if your pet needs expensive medical care. However, it can be expensive and you very well may not need that if your pet is healthy. A few common insurances, just kind of facts, good to know about. Of course, doesn't mean it's for all of you. But life insurance, about 45% of adults have life insurance. Most people are underinsured in the world, in the country specifically. But most of that come to me are overinsured. It's interesting to note. And so if we were to say, for example, you're paying for term life insurance and you're spending 500 bucks a year. And right now you realize that you only need to spend 250 bucks a year to have the coverage you need excluding returns in this example. Well, what if we took that 250 bucks, compounded that for 30 years, got 10% growth? You can imagine it's going to do well for you. But most people don't look at it that way, and I don't blame them. That's just the advisor in me right there. So I'll let you all call me a nerd right there. I'm okay with that. Now, with health insurance, about 92% of adults have health insurance. Most of you get it through your employer. If not, if you're self-employed, there are strategies here to really optimize your tax picture. So work with a planner, certainly, to dial this in. Auto insurance, about 90% of drivers have auto insurance. It is required in most states. And then homeowners, renters, about 70% have this. Insurance, once again, often not needed that I just went through. This might surprise you, but about 20% of consumers, they do have extended warranties. But like I said, they don't cover as much as most people need. Credit card insurance, about 10% of consumers have this. I don't love this. I would rather over credit card insurance that you get identity protection theft. Um, I know a lot of people use Xanderins, which is through Dave Ramsey. And whether you like Dave Ramsey or not, a lot of people just like that service. So that's Z-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-S, Xanderins. So identity theft protection, that to me is a, a return on hassle protection where if God forbid someone does steal your identity, they will fight for you. So it's just less hassle on your end. I can tell you right now that I use it. However, it's been a little cumbersome only in the fact that I, I get a lot of emails of which I find a lot are not applicable or needed. And so there's that danger of do I unsubscribe and then miss the important email? I find that I actually just put it in a certain folder and then if I do notice something's come up or I get a certain email, I have it flagged for me. But that's just a system I have on my end. Flight insurance, only about 5% actually have this and then pet insurance, about 2%. Of course, when I go through all of this, you're going, okay, Ari, this is helpful, but once again, high level. Yes, it's high level. I don't want to overwhelm you too much, but I also want you to walk away with going, okay, Ari, this is great. What do I do about this? The first thing I want you to do is ask yourself, how much longer are you going to keep working? Is long-term disability needed? Because if something happens to you, and even if your spouse is working, you're going to need income to come through. And if that doesn't come through, it's not solely the fact that, okay, now income's not coming through for cash flow, but it's, are we going to be able to save to our Roth IRA? Because the projection showed that we need to do that to be able to retire early. Okay. Well, if we were to just not have long-term disability, can we meet our needs through our emergency fund or cash reserves? Maybe, but where are we going to live on those in the first few years of an early retirement? With an early retirement, all of this is very different. If you were saying, I want to retire at 65 or age 70, okay, don't worry about health insurance. You're going to have Medicare. Okay, disability insurance. You're planning to keep working. If something happens, it's going to be a it's going to be something we need to discuss, but it's not none of this is near as important if you're not interested in an early retirement. But most of you are, and I would invite you to at least consider it, not if you don't love your job, but if you're going, "Hey, if something were to happen, I want to make sure I'm okay." 
I don't care if you want to retire early or if you don't. To me, this is one of those insurances where I'm going to give you that tough love of absolutely work, reach out to somebody. And with long-term disability, there's not you know a perfect person I can tell you right now that I've found where it's, hey, here's where you want to go. BC Brokerage, that's who I work through. A lot of people like Policy Genius. I've seen some people, they'll use Ameritas. I've seen a few different ones out there. But it's really tough because you're like, do I need this? How do I know? Well, once again, it really dials into, okay, how much longer do you want to keep working? Because if it's two, three more years, do you need it? Probably not. If it's five years, okay, would we be okay if something happened? Maybe, but does that mean we're not going to be able to implement some of the other strategies I talk about, like tax planning, where we're living off of some cash or living off of other safe assets so that we can implement some of the stuff I talk about? So a lot to this, which I realize with auto insurance, it's really tough to know, okay, how much liability am I covered? Meaning, is it an okay amount? I think I have a good policy, but I just don't know. If you go, yep, Ari, I want a full episode on auto insurance, a full deep dive, meaning this is resonating, I'm happy to do it. So, of course, just shoot me a note and say, Ari, yep, I want a full dive, auto insurance, full 10, 15 minutes. Same thing with life insurance or how you view long-term disability. Today's a little bit about all of it because I want you to invite, I'm inviting yourself, please think about these things. I realize it's not the sexiest thing ever, and I can go more into the weeds, I go less into the weeds. But I really want to make sure if you're looking at personal injury, if you're looking at umbrella insurance, if you're looking at all of this, not just do you need it, there's all these types out there and it over overwhelms people. And my whole thing, I want to keep it simple. I want you to go, yep, I know if I need insurance or if I don't. I've got a homeowner's policy. A lot of you do, and you're going, okay, all right, but what about, you know, if there's a lightning storm or what if, you know, something gets stolen? Is that covered by it? It depends. It depends on the policy. And so if you reach out to myself, if you want a comprehensive holistic plan going, is my insurance talking to all the other aspects of my plan? Of course, that's what I love to do. But it's it's more than just that, meaning don't hire a planner just for this. Speak with someone that either in your area or online that you go, yep, this is an insurance specialist to be able to make sure you get the needs met that, that you need. Less people that I find, very few people, should I say, actually reach out and make sure that they have proper protection. And the reason that this is so important is I just want you sleeping well at night. I think people underestimate how much better you will sleep knowing you will not have to worry if something happens. So for all of you out there that currently have insurance policies of any of these that we've discussed today, I hope you are going, I want to pay this every month and I hope I never get that return back. So another really weird way of thinking about it, which I fully realize, if of course you are looking for more financial topics regarding early retirement planning. I hope that this has been helpful and you can always submit a question on my website, earlyretirementpodcast.com or reach out to myself if you are looking to create a custom strategy. Hope that was helpful and I'll see y'all next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Early Retirement Show. If you have a question that you want answered in a future episode, you can always go to my website, earlyretirementpodcast.com. That's earlyretirementpodcast.com. Dot com, and you can go ahead and submit a question that I'll look to answer in a future episode. Thank you all for listening. Please do rate it, review it, and share it with someone who you think would benefit from this information if there's anyone out there that you know. I certainly appreciate it, and I will see you all each week. Hey, guys, it's me again. Please be smart about this. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as financial, tax, or legal advice. Consult with your tax preparer or financial advisor before taking any action. This podcast is for informational purposes only.